Right. Shalom, I'm giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, to water for tuning in. We're going to go over um, some scriptures pertaining to the Holy Convocation of Pentecost, Feast of Weeks, and Feast of Ingathering. As always, I'm going to start over with Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Baha Shama Mashiach, Yahushai, give you thanks to the most high and the Father, Baha Shama Mashiach, Yahushai. So. We're going to go to Exodus, the 34th chapter, and verse 22. And it says, And thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks. We shall observe the Feast of Weeks. Of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. So this is what we observe in the Feast of Weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the Feast of Ingathering at the end, year's end. So it's a certain period of time that we um, are to come together for, like it says in um, uh, Deuteronomy 16 and 9. Which is a holy convocation, a feast day of the Most High. Deuteronomy 16 and 9. Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. You see, so we count seven weeks. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks. Unto the Most High thy power with the tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Most High thy power, according as the Most High thy power hath blessed thee. You see? So, as the Most High blesses thee, you should have something to give for the feast, all the feast days, really. And thou shalt rejoice before the Most High thy power, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which the Most High thy power have chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt and that thou observe and do these statutes. So it's a commandment that he's telling us that we're supposed to do these things. Joshua 5 and ten. Keep these feast days. Joshua, you know, Joshua brought us into the promised land. Joshua and Caleb. Joshua five and ten. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho. So we kept the Passover just like this year for all those that follow the dark moon. Everything lined up perfect. The 14th day of the month which is the first day of the month. The 14th day of the, I mean not the first day, but the first month, the 14th day, which was the new moon, lined up perfect. And the 15th day was the Feast of Eleven Bread. The 14th day, like it's here, we observed the Passover. And the true of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, which is the first month, at even. In the plains of Jericho. So the holy days start at evening, when it's evening. Some people want to do it in the daytime, whatever, but it tells you these days start at evening. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, which is unleavened, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We ate unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day, which is, you would have said, and they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, which would be the day of Feast of Eleven Bread, where you can come and eat 
whatever you want to eat as a feast. It's called a feast, right? But everything has to be unleavened. You can't have any leaven. That's why you say it's unleavened cakes. Sweet cakes and parched corn in the self same day, which is the day after Passover. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Feasting. <laughs> That's the land he gave us, the land of Canaan. He said, we did eat of the land of Canaan that year. But, you know, the manna, he said, let us know that the manna that he had sent from heaven, which would be angel food, said, it stopped. So let's go to Leviticus 23 and 14. Leviticus 23 and 14. It says, and ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto the, your power, it shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. So, these are the things that, you know, he's given us orders. He said, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf or the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So, seven Sabbaths is... Seven times seven is 49, right? Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, which will be the 50th day, shall ye number 50 days. There it is. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Most High. <coughs> These are the things that we done when we were able to operate under the, with the Most High, giving us directions to the priest. And letting us know how to honor these holy convocations or holy gatherings. Look at Exodus 23 and 16. Like we honoring the Feast of Pentecost. Exodus 23 and 16. And the Feast of Harvest, it's the Feast of Ingathering, Feast of Harvest, Feast of Pentecost also. And the Feast of Harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the Feast of Ingathering, which is in the end of the year, which thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the, out of the field. He's telling us, this feast we're supposed to observe. Numbers 28 and 26. Numbers 28 and 26. Also in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Most High, after your weeks be out, ye shall have an holy convocation, you shall do no serve our work. It's just like a regular Sabbath. You observe it just like a regular Sabbath. You see? Um, it's the 50th day after the Passover. So you count 50 days from whenever you have your Passover. And that'll be the Feast of Pentecost, Feast of Weeks, Feast of Ingathering. All the same feast. Um... And it was a dedication of the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Let's look at Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. In Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, it um, gives us the feast days of the Most High. These feast days are the Most High. Like uh, ceremonial laws, that's what we're looking at and dealing with, you know, observing the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Gathering. Uh, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, let's look at verse 15. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf or the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. And seven Sabbaths. You told you seven weeks, now I say seven Sabbaths. You see it say seven, seven Sabbaths, seven weeks. So the Sabbaths is every seven days. So the only way you're going to count it. So 
And that's seven Sabbaths in a row, which would be what? 49 days. And the next day will be the 50th day. Keep that in mind. Because you hear it saying seven Sabbaths, it says seven weeks too. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete, which will be 49 days. Even until the morrow after the seven Sabbath, which is the 50th day, shall ye count 50 days, and ye shall offer a meat, a new meat offering unto the Most High. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits of the Most High. It is not Passover. Or feast of leavened bread, we can have leaven. Flour with yeast in it. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year. So the lambs have to be of the first year. And nothing has to be perfect. Can't be nothing wrong with them. And one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Most High with their meat offering and their drink offerings. Even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Most High. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Most High with two lambs. They shall be holy to the Most High for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein, just like the regular Sabbath. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. He's telling you it's a statue forever throughout all our generations. He's making it clear. He told us, and when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reap it. So he's telling us we're supposed to leave the corners of the field so that, you know, strangers of our nation can come and they can be able to pick something. Not like it is now. Bob wire all over the, the fields and they got people out there with shotguns ready to kill you if you pick something from their uh, fields. It says... Neither shall thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Once you pick whatever you pick, that's it. Thou shalt lead them unto the poor. See? So somebody journeying, they can go, they know they can go to the corners of these fields and get them some fruit or some vegetables, whatever they want to get. And to the stranger, I am the most high of your power. See? So these are straight commandments that the most high has given us. Um Instituted on the 50th day. Look, look at, let's start at verse 1, Leviticus 23 and 1. So you see that these are Sabbath. These holy convocations are Sabbath, but they are the feast days of the Most High. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. You hear him saying, A statue from generation to generation and forever. Speak unto the children of Israel, because we're going to be doing this in, this, in the uh, kingdom too. And say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Most High. See, these are his feasts which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. See? So listen to what he says. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the rest and holy convocation, a holy gathering. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Most High in all your dwellings, wherever we dwell in. These are the feasts of the Most High, even holy convocations which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. See? So now he starts to name all the different holy days that we're supposed to have. That's why you should go over the Leviticus 23rd chapter to memorize all the holy days like you know all the holy days, or the, I'll say the hell of days, of this world. You know when that is. So you should know every last holy day and how they come in order. You know, which are the feasts that the Most High has just said. He's his feast. Numbers um, 28 and um, 26. Numbers 28 and 26. 
also in the day of the first fruits, which we're in, when you bring a new meat offering unto the Most High, after your weeks be out, which is seven weeks in a day, remember, ye shall have an holy convocation, holy gathering, ye shall do no servile work, but ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Most High, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil. Like you make a roast, you know, you put the flour on it. Same thing, put that oil, put the oil on it, and put the flour on it. Say three tenth deals unto one bullock, two tenth deals unto one ram. So he's letting you know how much to put on them. A sev several tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs. And one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. So the goat was used for the atonement for our sins. Ye shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering and his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish and their meat drink offerings. This is what we did. Uh, go to the Apocrypha. Go to Tobik 2, 1 and 2. Tobik 1 and 2. Tobik 2, 1 and 2. Tobik 2 and 1. Now when I was come home again and my wife Anna was restored unto me with my son Tobias in the Feast of Pentecost. See? Feast of Pentecost, which is Feast of Gathering, Feast of Weeks. Which is the Holy Feast of the seven weeks. See that? Remember it says seven Sabbaths? Now you see it says seven weeks. So it has to be the Sabbath has to be every seven days because you can't count 49 days except for seven Sabbaths, seven weeks, which is seven times seven is 49. The next day is the 50th day, which would be the Feast of Pentecost, as we're going to see. Even in Acts, the second chapter is going to tell you this. Once again, he says, in the Feast of Pentecost, which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. There was a good dinner prepared me, in the which I sat down to eat. And when I saw abundance of meat, I said to my son, Go and bring what poor man soever thou shalt find out of our brethren, an Israelite. See, go find a poor brother who is mindful of the Most High, and lo, I tarry for thee. So he said, Hey. But you see, he's absorbing the Feast of Pentecost. Look at 2 Maccabees, the 12th chapter. Second Maccabees, the 12th chapter, and the 31st and 32nd verse. They gave them thanks, desiring them to be friendly, still unto to them and so they came to Jerusalem the feast of the weeks approaching see that the feast of the weeks approaching which is the feast of Pentecost and after the feast called Pentecost Penta means five fifty they went forth against Giorgio the governor of Idumea and Edomite Giorgio and an Edomite or so called white general to war um look at second chronicles 8 and 13 second chronicles 8 13 even after a certain rate every day offering according to the commandment of moses on the sabbaths and on the new moons which is the first day of the weeks first day of the month so like you and on the solemn feast, three times in the year, even in the Feast of Eleven Bread and in the Feast of Weeks that we are observing, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. Those three feast days, the Most High require all men to come together. Feast of Eleven Bread is the day after Passover, as we just seen earlier. The next day after Passover, on the 15th of the first month. 
A lot of people don't observe it because you can't put the 14th and the 15th in the same, you know, being the same day. That's why you see they said they, they made um, 11 cakes and so forth, 11 cakes because it was Feast of Unleavened Bread for those seven days and so forth. Passover, you have no unleavened, and then the next day, everybody come together because the Passover was done in the home. And then the next day, everybody came together for the feast, for the Holy Convocation. Um, and I did uh, lessons on that. If anybody want to look at that um, on my YouTube page. So, this, uh, go to, go to Acts, the second chapter. And verse one, this is the day of Pentecost, but we observe it. Now, let me say this. Amashak Abishai died. You remember, he died on the Passover. They came, got him that Passover night. And they did all the judging all that night. And they killed him. They crucified him. And then the rich man Joseph came to get his body from the tree that they hung him on before the evening, the next evening. That's the law. That's our law. So he was in the tomb. Everybody had Passover, had Passover in their home, and everybody coming together on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which would be the next day. He was in, he was already in the tomb. He was already in the tomb for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and everybody coming together. You see, that's why it wasn't a lot of people, Israelites, that was there during this judgment. That's why I don't say a lot of people, it's just those that, you know, said crucify him, let his blood be on us. And like Peter was, you know, he said, you're going to deny me before the, the rooster crow. And he, it was three times he denied him. And they did crow. You know, he went away sorrowful. So you see, if you read the story, it's not that many that was, you know, down for him. They say, no, don't crucify him. He had those that were against him. So here we are. He died. And well, let's go back so you'll see. Go back to Acts, the first chapter, and we'll get some understanding here. Um, Acts, the first chapter, and we can read verse 2. It says, Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Mashiach was shot. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, after he rose on the third day, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days. So now we got to count. I guess I can count really well. So he died, he rose on the third day. Now they seen him forty days, right? That's forty-three days. Now he told them. Um, that um, they would um, let me find it. Um, okay, then it says because um, they asked him about verse six. They said when they therefore were come together. Now he's been. On the earth for 40 days. So when, he first, when they had come together, they asked of him, saying, Mashiach, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they said, you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Now hear this. So you let nobody tell you the end of the world is going to be this day or that day is coming. Only the Most High know. He don't even know. I'm not sure I don't even know. He said it's in the Father's power. The most high have power to determine when he's going to decide for the end of the world. Or Esau being the end of the world and Jacob being it that followed, as it says in 2 Ezra 6 and 9. It says, this is what he told him. But ye shall receive power. That's spiritual power. When? After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be 
witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth, right? So once the Holy Spirit come upon them, then they said he told them they're going to be filled with power, right? So now he has said, um, um, in verse 12, it says, now that's, we all, we dealing with 43 days, right? He died, rose on the third day, walked the earth as we read, and for 40 days, they were seeing him. That's why they say you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel. They thinking that he's going to do the things that we waiting for him to do. Come and judge and make war and set up righteousness on this earth. It says, then, verse 12, then return day unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. So you look at $43, excuse me, 43 days, and then seven days rep represent what? 50 days, right? Just That's a, a means of counting. That's all, just a means of counting. Seven, a Sabbath day's journey, you know, seven days. So that's 50 days. So now, going to ask the second chapter in the first verse, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that's the 50th day. They were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So this rushing mighty wind came into the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. So we got to look at this um, wind and this fire, this rushing mighty wind and this fire that appeared unto them. Because it's very important that we see this. Go to our second Ezra 8 and 21. This is the most high. Talk about the most high. It says, whose throne is inestimable. So his powers and authorities cannot be measured. Whose glory may not be comprehended. Before whom the host of angels, the army of angels, stand with trembling. Right? But listen at this. Whose service is conversed in wind and fire. You hear that? Just like I said, a rushing wind came in. And cloven tongues like as of fire, these are languages that they were being uh, told to speak for the brothers that had came from all these different lands. You'll see. But you see the Most High whose service is conversed in wind and fire, whose word is true and sayings constant, whose commandment is strong and ordinance fearful. So I'm here to show you that it tells you whose service is conversing, you have a conversation in wind and fire, right? So, the fire, look what the fire is. Jeremiah 23 and 29. It's the fire right here. Jeremiah 23 and 29. It says, is not my word like as a fire? You see? Said the Most High, and like a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces. Say, Second Ezra is thirteen to thirty-eight. Second Ezra is thirteen and thirty-eight, and shall lay before them when he come to judge and make war their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. That's fire. He bringing fire. To destroy this earth. No more flood. You put the rainbow in the sky to remind himself. He's not going to flood the earth. He's going to bring fire. He said. And, and he shall destroy them. Without labor. By the law. By the law of the most high. Which is like unto fire. He's going to be telling them. As he's killing them. You know how you get. Yeah I don't know. Some of you probably never got no weapons. But. You know, they be whipping your butt and talking, telling you about what you did wrong. Is they whipping you? That's how you're going to be doing. With the law of the most high, the things that y'all say that we not under. You poach up eating preachers. You say you're going you're gonna to be tormented. That's what it's just saying. His law is as fire. That's the word of the most high. So, going back to Acts, the second chapter. Now that we know that the wind... 
The Most High is conversed in wind and in fire, which is his word. We're going back to Acts 2. This is the day of Pentecost, the day that we are observing. Acts 2 and 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Remember, the Most High conversed in wind and fire. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. So that's his conversation. His word is coming. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, which is languages, like as of fire. That's the word of the Most High. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me say you're going to be endowed with the Holy Spirit. That's, you're going to be endowed with power. That's spiritual power. Once that the Holy Spirit has come upon them. He said that in Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power. That's spiritual power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You see? So now the Holy Spirit is coming upon them. On this 50th day of Pentecost after the Passover. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, Acts 2 and 4, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Now, let's let you know who was at the day of Pentecost. Because a lot of y'all go to church and y'all use this. They say you got to speak in tongues, be filled with the Holy Ghost, and justify yourself here when it says, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, Israelites. Not no Gentiles. You call yourself Gentiles, grafted in, don't know who you've been grafting in among. You say you're filled with the Holy Ghost, but you don't know the word of the Most High. Like you should. Because you ain't being taught. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. According to the fact that this Bible is our book, the Israelites. We are the Israelites, you're not being taught that. Now that you're talking about you're a Gentile being grafted in, don't know who you've been grafted in among. So listen who was there. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, not no Gentiles, none of other nations. Not even you that's an Israelite calling yourself a Gentile. Understand, only the Israelites. Devout men, that means spiritual, righteous men. From where? Out of every nation under heaven. You see? Now, verse 9 tells you where they, they well, let's read verse 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue, our own language. From the places that they came from, the Israelites that were scattered among all these places, speaking different languages, wherein we were born. Look where we came from, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phy Phygia and Phamphidia in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene. And strangers of Rome, we are all these places, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues, the wonderful works of the Most High. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying oh, one to another, what mean is this? What's going on? Because they heard the Spirit of the Most High speaking to them in their languages. When they're looking at these men, like, how are they, how they speaking in my language? It's a miracle. Some of you don't believe in miracles. Or you, ain't you ain't received enough miracles to know that this is real. Remember, the Most High is conversing in wind and fire. So that's his spirit, the Holy Spirit that he sent. Who is a Mashiach Yahweh Shai as the spirit of the Most High? Because look what he said. Let's make sure that we understand this. Before I conclude, because he told you in... Um, St. John, the 14th chapter, he said, let's start at 15, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? Keep the laws of the Most High and the commandments of the Most High. If you love him, I shall kill with shy. He ain't never said he dismissed no commandments or laws. And I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter, right? That he, not no she, People trying to say the Holy Spirit is a sheep that he may abide with you forever. Who is this covenant? Even the spirit of truth. You see? Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. So people of the world, are, are, most of the people in the religions, y'all can't see this. Because neither know of him. But ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. 
the spirit of the most high, spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, the comforter. He's, listen to what he said here. I, this is very key. I, that's so much that was shy, will not leave you comfortless. Hear what he said? I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I will come to you. Can't get no clearer than that. He said, I will come to you. See? Say, yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. Because when you when you understand, that's the first chapter and the ninth verse. <clears throat> It says, and when he has spoken these things, told them they're going to die with the Holy Spirit, like we're seeing that's, that's happening in Acts, the second chapter, on after this week journey that he used for a time period, because it was 43 days, because he died and rose on the third day, walked the earth for 40 days. That's 43 days. He told them the Sabbath day's journey. So that's the 50th day. When we get to Acts, the second chapter, we in the Feast of Pentecost, <coughs> or the day of Pentecost. So now, verse 9 of Acts, the first chapter, saying, when he has spoken these things, told them they're going to be down with power, spiritual power, once the Holy Spirit come upon them. While they beheld, while they was looking at him, he was taken up. He ascended up in a cloud, which is a chariot of the Most High, or the angels of the Most High, the vehicles of the Most High, received him out of their sight. See? And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, looking up in the sky, as he went up, as he ascended up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who are angels, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Why are you looking up in the sky? This same Amashiach Yavashai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall, go, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven, right? So when you look at Revelation 1 and 7, it says, Behold, he coming with clouds. Just like he went up in a cloud, he coming with clouds. He coming with the angels. <laughs> the vehicles, the chairs of the most high, what they call UFOs. And they see them all over right now. We call them IFOs, identified flying objects. Not, not, not unidentified, but identified flying objects. Behold, he coming with clouds. Let me let me show you what the clouds is. Hold that. Get uh, Psalms 104. And three, so you know that um, I'm not just saying something and making it up because you know, like a lot of people they talk, y'all used to hearing people talk and y'all regurgitate what it says, remember these scriptures, so you know because the Bible defines itself, it's just a matter of knowing where these scriptures are to define why it's saying clouds. You know, they really remember when you read the New Testament, there is no New Testament, there's only the law and the prophets. So they're giving you understanding of certain things. You got to go back to the law and the prophets to be able to find out what it's saying. Like we going back to find out what's I'm sitting in a cloud. How can how can anyone be on a cloud? But listen to what it says in Psalms 104 and 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Because everything comes from the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. See? It's a vehicle. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. And then when you look at... Um, this is what we're looking at because it's very important that we see this so that when you know that these clouds represent chariots, then it makes it easier to understand when they say he'll send it up in the cloud. You ain't looking, trying to figure out anything because it's right there, you know. So now, going back to Acts, the second chapter, and you see the verse 5 says, this counsels out all Gentiles or these other nations. When it says, and there, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. You see? So verse 9 tells you where they came from. Parthians and Medes, these are Israelites. Scattered in these different lands. Just like Paul was, was when you look at the Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Thessalonians, and all the different books that we have in this New Testament, those are Israelites that are scattered in those lands. And when you go to the first parts of the books of the that I just named, that you can go into yourself. It says to the saints. So it says the most high our power. Who the most high the power of? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Exodus 3, 15, 16. Uh, Matthew 22, 32. You look at uh, Acts 3, 13. 
And Jacob is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. Point blank. That's who the Most High is. Then, now, and forever. Look, so these are the places that we came from. Speaking in, and the miracle was they were speaking in the languages of the Israelites that came from these different lands. Verse 9 of Acts, the second chapter. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in, in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phygia and Phyphilia and Egypt and in parts of Libya. About Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues, in our languages. The wonderful works of the Most High. Hear that? The wonderful works of the Most High. Because they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High. And he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Right? So he is coming to us. Right here. And they were all amazed and were in doubt. Saying one to another, what mean is this? What is, what's the meaning of this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. How are you going to be full of new wine? They try to make fun of them. They say, they full of new wine. How are you going to be full of wine and going to speak in another language? Make that make sense. But that's our mindset. But Peter, standing up with the leaven, lifted up his voice and said to them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, or as, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. This is only the third hour of the day, man. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. See, he's in the, New, old, he's in the old Testament. Going to the book of Joel, the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said the Most High, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And all, and all my servants, which are the Israelites, and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Most High come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Mashiach Yavashai shall be saved, ye men of Israel. So you can't get anybody else in this conversation except for Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yahushai of Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High among you. So Yahushai was among the Israelites. Who? Ye men of Israel, approved by the Most High among you, the Israelites, by miracles and wonders and signs which the Most High did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also know. See? So, this is... Uh, what happened on the Feast of Pentecost? Look at First, First uh, Corinthians, the sixteenth chapter, and the eighth verse. Is that what I want? Um, let me see. No, that's not sixteen. Um, Salakia. Um, Let's go. To, that's, that's that's not right. Let's let's go to uh, the fact that all males were required to go in um, Exodus twenty three and seventeen. Salakia, Exodus twenty three and seventeen. Exodus twenty three and seventeen. Three times in a year, all thy males shall appear before the Most High thy power. Right? So, three times in a year, all the males are supposed to require to be, appear before the Most High. Go to Exodus 34 and 23. Exodus 34, 23. Thrice, which means three, in the year, Shall all your male children appear before the Most High your power, the power of Israel? See? Three times. Okay.
okay? And those three times are the Feast of Eleven Bread, which is the day after Passover. The Feast of Weeks or Feast of Pentecost or Feast of Ingathering, the same feast by those names. And the Feast of Tabernacles, when we, we dwell in booths, remember that. So, look at Psalm 42 and 4. Psalms 42 and 4. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of the Most High with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy days. See? He kept the holy days. Uh, Psalms 122. 122 and 4. That was King David. 122 and 4. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Most High, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Most High. You see? So, from there we're going to look at Ezekiel 36 and 38. 36 and 38. As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast. Like this solemn. Uh oh. Battery went out. 